Hello everyone, and welcome to another Horror of Review. Tonight I'm joined once again by Steve, and we're going to be talking about the all-time classic, An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, the movie tells the tale of two backpackers on a walking holiday who fall foul of a werewolf on the English mirrors. Uh, the film was made on a budget of $5.8 million and took in $62 million at the box office. God, do you remember that, when they could actually make affordable movies that were profitable? Yeah, yeah, it was, um... Back then, any anything that was good made a substantial profit, didn't it? I mean, if you look at it now, five point eight million up to sixty-two million doesn't seem a lot, and uh, does it for a film? Because these days, uh, you know, a hundred million makes a billion. But um, you yeah, need three that, times the budget to make yeah. back a, a movie because that's obviously the budget of the movie itself, plus um, marketing costs and all the, and you know. Yeah. All the side things go on. So basically, the rule is that a movie needs to make three times what yeah. it's spent, and anything over that makes it a success. Yeah, puts it into the black, so to speak. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's but such 60, measly amounts. Two million for nineteen eighty one was very good. Mm -hmm. it? But, uh, yeah, and it's but become a, it's become a cult film afterwards. So it's all the all the money that's come in through VHS and Blu rays and um special editions and licensing out for characters yeah. and you name it um yeah yeah but this is even just straight from the box office you know that's that's a whopping success um yeah. and you don't see that anymore because the movies are just too bloody expensive they're just chucking money at them they're just big cgi fests um yeah. this no cgi was only not even science fiction <laughs> at that point um yeah. 100% practical effects, old school, um, relatable characters. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. And, and a big British cast as well in this one. Um, oh. Even down as far as Rick Mayo. Well done, Chris. <laughs> Welcome. You can actually <laughs> talk about this one. Fair play to him. He turns up the, these streams and he hasn't watched even a quarter of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, Rick Mayo. Was he in it? Yeah, he was uh, in the opening scene uh, where the two boys go into the pub. He was actually one of the chess players. I missed that. Oh, God, I should have. Yeah, very young Rick Mayo. So, yeah. Bloody hell, man. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the young lads, David and Jack. Like, they're actually nice, down to earth people. Like, as I just said, they're yeah. like, how refreshing is it? To see relatable, actually relatable protagonists in a movie, and not snarky, one-dimensional, yeah, awful people you just can't root for. Yeah, because um, they were just two normal lads, weren't they? Who were out hiking, and they weren't uh, even up the mischief. They're just we want to go and do a hiking tour because it's something we enjoy, yeah. and it's all good natured, even in their back of the sheep truck. Yeah, like the, it's all they were making jokes on it. Like yeah. when um, one of them goes. See you, girls, to the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, no, they, they were very good. And back then, you never had uh, one swear word, did you, like that? It was, it was just nice conversation between the two. I have no um, problem, obviously, with swearing. You know, if it's useful, it's useful. I do enough of it yeah. on this channel. But I don't like um, just vulgarness for the sake of it. I, don't, I think it loses its effect. Yeah. When you have to be just when your only selling point is just being vulgar, then what are you adding? Yeah. Um I mean sometimes there's a need for it. Mm -hmm. Um if you take um uh some of the British gangster movies, you know, if you go into places like Essex, you know, the F word is used constantly. And if they're making a film about, you know, uh, gangsters in Essex or wherever uh, it, it's needed because it's part it's, of the lingo it's the language you know it's but um like you said these were just two lads out hiking and um they were nice young lads uh, just... and that's the thing as well even the title because a lot of um you know americans in britain or medi american medieval times is all about oh i'm the big conquering hero blah 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 but yeah. these were just normal blokes doing doing what they did um yeah. And just happen to be in an absolutely 
end up in an absolutely crazy situation, which, you know, yeah. life changing. And that, that was uh, that story alone, you know, I mean, it didn't have to be Americans, it could have been Spanish werewolf in New York, you know, I mean, it could be anything. It was just the whole point of a tourist coming into an area that they, they look good in a map, but without local knowledge, you know, you don't really know what you're getting into. Yeah. Of course, you had the. It was supposed to be in Yorkshire, and it was actually found in Powys in uh, in North Wales. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and um, the pub, the Slaughtered Lamb. What what a name that that was. That was class in itself. Yeah, um, and that was definitely a local bar for local people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was like I've been in pubs again. Um, you go in and the music started, it would just turned around stars. You're yeah. Like, oh right, okay. But um. If you uh, see the the making of and everything like that, the the actual pub was only a cottage in a little village in in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, it, it was a it wasn't actually a pub. It was it was a cottage. At the well, end. I've seen that in the country. You know, what I mean, I've seen that out in the Lake District, and I've seen it in Donegal, where basically um, somebody's converted the front room of a house. You know, I mean, just yeah. a terrace house. They've just converted the front room, and it's a bar, and it fits maybe eight people. But it serves the community enough. We've done that. I remember doing my Duke of Edinburgh's award and doing the expedition part in Donegal. And I yeah. uh, like just came across a pub and, like, well, yeah, I know we're only 14, but yeah, the rules are a bit slack over here. And be rude not to. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. the teachers couldn't wonder why I thought our map reading was terrible. We were back a little. <laughs> it's like, sorry, we're only kids, you know, <laughs> you know a couple of pints on us. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but, such times. I don't think it, uh, that, it was. It was uh, just the the opening when I mean that scene where they walk into the pub and everything goes quiet. That's actually happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh, where I've walked into a pub. I can't remember where it was. Now. And we've walked into a pub and and because we weren't locals, it was like <laughs> all gone quiet, and we thought. Oh, we're not staying here for very long, but um, yeah, um, but yeah, I think if I walked into a pub and saw a, a, um, a pentacle on the wall, I'd have to ask what it was as well. <laughs> um, yeah, and the way that um, obviously we'll talk about that later into the plot. Um, such a weird reaction. Yeah, but yeah. yeah the walk in and uh, but I don't think it did. That's what we're trying to say here. Um, this movie didn't. These were just normal lads that you could actually relate with. And yeah. it wasn't even just the American part was just a nothing, really. No, it was just happenstance. Yeah, like, like you said. You two relatable characters here. A Spanish uh, in London, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference because of the, the same type of characters, the same circumstances. Uh, yeah. Insert nationality at the part of the title doesn't really... You know I mean? It could have yeah. just been a tour... Uh, it wouldn't really rhyme off the tongue, but you know, a tourist werewolf, you know, yeah, a backpacking werewolf in London, you know, just happened yeah. to fit. And like I said, the you find yourself warming to the two lads immediately, and that's that's yeah. half the battle. If you can warm to the protagonists, then you feel a level of sympathy when things start to happen. Yeah, which yeah. I think movies have got so wrong today. Oh uh, yeah, very much because. Like you said, you warm to them because um, they're not over the top, and you 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 actually feel like you could be one of those lads, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, sort of thing. You know, oh, I could play that part, sort of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, and no. then you thought, thought they were unfairly treated when they went to the pub because there was absolutely no call for it. No, like the, the hostility. Yeah. yeah, and you're like. Yeah, that's that's on call for. Like, if I had been brash, you know, Hawaiian shirt, camera, you know, <laughs> oh, I think you're so small over here, man, like the USA and all that. Not, yeah, you could understand going, yeah, go get some more yeah. But the fact that we're nice, so, polite lads, and then yeah. everyone's just being absolutely dick towards them, <laughs> it's like, yeah. really, no call, no need. Uh, there wasn't really. It's uh, you know, because like you said, they're quite innocent, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, going, going, the casting was brilliant for those two lads because um, 
really they they were sort of unknown if, if um they weren't the sort of names that you would have um thought oh i've got to see this film because so and so's in it um you know they they even though yes they were uh, good actors they uh, um but like i said the even the supporting cast i mean you had the likes of um brian glover who's a well talented actor and uh, you had the the doctor and I'm trying to think of his name. Um, oh, he was an interesting character. Oh, oh, Dr. Hirsch. Um, Dr. Hirsch. John Woodvine. If you check on John Wood, Woodvine, he's had such a career. Um, and, um, you know, you, you think, here's this, here's this guy with such a, a brilliant career behind him, and he's appeared in this... Um, at first, you could say risky... Um, werewolf film when he hasn't done anything like that before, mm-hmm. uh, which just goes to show how versatile an actor this yeah. guy is. Because he, he does that again lay into the prejudice against horror? Oh, why would you demean yourself being part of a horror movie? You know, yeah, is that mindset so much in the zeitgeist? Yeah, because that oh, horror couldn't possibly have talented actors wanting to take part. How, how could such a thing happen? Is that really but, so prevalent in people's minds? But people would say, um, you know, what's what's this? Oh, that's a horror film um, starring so-and-so. He's never done a horror film before. Why is he doing a horror film? I've even had people say to me, oh, is he desperate for work? Not not John Wivon. Um, in sort of, you know, further films. Oh, you know, is this guy's in a horror film? He's never been in a horror film before. Is he desperate for work? Um, but like you said, there is a prejudice against people being in horror films. Who's even even down as far as saying, um, you know, they've never done that genre before. Well, why now? Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't see that working. That would not have worked. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, another cast member who was in it who played the um the embassy guy in the hospital was frank oz oh he was so random wasn't he yeah um, oh yeah. i'll cover the area and how dare you not be great like the guy's just woke up from like from what we heard essentially a three-week coma yeah <laughs> that's completely traumatic how dare you not be grateful for me coming from my office to speak to you like, what the hell is that um i suppose yeah. my Let's go through the plot that we get to that point because that's where mm. there's almost borderline satire with this movie. And I really can't make up my mind whether it's intentional or not. Yeah, I think the, they brought out the comedy very well. Oh, uh, uh, even, even the even still laughing. The, the opening tune, Blue Moon. You know, what a song, <laughs> isn't it, for, uh, for a werewolf film. Um, yeah. But they have three different versions in, in the film, you know. Um, of Blue Moon, um, yeah, it's done by different people. Um, Sam Cook, uh, who was the opening one done? Um, uh, Sam Cook was the, the middle one, and then they had a um, a swing type of version in it. Um, yeah, but it, it was done three different ways. What was the song at the very end? That was a weird one to finish off on. Um, I don't know. I know these are not. I normally, uh, I'm the story line guy. That's why I have other people to talk about the other bits because I, all that stuff goes over my head. Uh, yeah. Even though it's interesting, I just, my whole focus when I watch these is on the, the plot, how the story comes together and that, those sort of beats. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a, this could have went so wrong, I think, because the, the comedy was done not on the knuckle as an offensive comedy, but, this movie could have descended into farce the way that the had the comedy in. It really was yeah. a tightrope to walk with it. And one misstep and this movie would have fallen apart. But the fact that the man is to maintain the tightrope between the, the horror aspect, the tragedy aspect, yeah. and the comedy, God, it's just um I think that's what makes it so endearing today that you can if I just watched it yesterday. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's brilliant still. Yeah, it's not like I haven't watched it for years. Like I, I watch it on a regular basis. It's one of those movies. Uh, we'll, we'll never, we'll never speak of the sequel though. That never happened. You know when uh, David turns up and uh, 
as a sort of zombie type of effect. Oh, Jack, you mean? In, in the hospital. And then um, he's like, you know, he said that the makeup is absolutely, you know, scary in itself. But yeah. he's, he's turned up and he's having a full scale conversation with, with the guy in the bed, you know. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that that is done so well um that uh you know um, um yeah not, not david um jack jack when it jack yeah. was a zombie yeah um, um i have one major plot point that and it's only the one but it's read right the beginning yeah if they hadn't have sent them like they were being hostile and like oh what are you doing here is you know we don't have anything for you and beware of the woods but get out yeah, and you're like, if it had just not been so antagonistic, and maybe just went, oh, lads, it's not safe out here. You know, there's still wild animals, and even yeah. if they had a said, there's a couple of rabbit dogs. You know, they could have made up an excuse. Yeah. Um. Here, stay in the guest house for the night. Yeah. Or a barn. Um. This whole movie, obviously, the whole movie wouldn't have happened. No. But the that's the sort of plot point. The the initial antagonism of the villagers who also don't want them to know their business, but then putting them in harm's way. Yeah. And then they part of the business. Then they went out and followed them and shot the, the werewolf. So why didn't they do that when they weren't there? Um... Yeah. And also why <laughs> didn't they, uh, why didn't they deal with David? Why did they patch him up and then send him yeah. to the hospital? Knowing, seeing the new, the lore and what was going to happen, knowing yeah. he's going to turn into a werewolf. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's that part of the plot, and it's the yeah. crucial part. Um, but the, the, other, the other thing there was, um, which you could ask yourself, is um, this was supposed to be in Yorkshire. Why did they send him to a hospital in London? Because Yorkshire's got some brilliant hospitals. In fact, they've got um, you know some uh, outstanding university hospitals. I don't suppose they had them in 1981. Um, but uh, yeah, why send them all the way to to London to a hospital from Yorkshire? Yeah, but that, um, that whole part of the plot actually tears apart the entire movie because it makes no sense. Yeah, but I suppose, thankfully it's so well acted and so endearing that you kind of forgive it. <laughs> I suppose an American werewolf in Leeds or Bradford just wouldn't have. <laughs> Hit the spot, would it? Yeah. Had to be the capital of, of uh, Britain, you know, London. <laughs> well, they could have just done an outland village. Yeah. God. But couldn't even done Feltham, you know, and it's, it wasn't like a full, like fully absorbed into the London borough as it is now. <laughs> yeah. And then had them come in. But um, yeah, I think what it, what it was, it just needed it to be London for the embassy and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah as we, like I said, it's that whole point. That's the only bit that like makes me scratch my head about this movie. Yeah, but you, you again, you you just ignore it. You, it's an old yeah, age. Um, <laughs> but that's yeah. if the movie wasn't as good as it was. Yeah, that would that would have taken you away from the whole thing. Yeah, and that's that's where it's down to not special effects, but character acting because. There's very little effects in this movie. You know, yeah. it's not like a whole splatter fest leading the way through it. Um the the rest of this movie is carried on the characters. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that. You know, like I said, this this walks such a tight line that yeah. it could have just devolved into farce at any moment. And yet yeah. it didn't. No. And there wasn't too much comedy. No, just the right amount of levity to bring you back down again. Right back, yeah, and, and then it went back to the serious sort of horror, and then they introduced just a, a you know a little bit, like like when he ran through the park when he was hid behind the bush and uh, speaks to that kid, and he goes, and the kid goes back to his mum and says, uh, "A naked American man stole my balloons." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that was brilliant. But, yeah, uh, just so deadpan about it. And you're like... Because the, the mum would have just thought, you're telling lies, Mac. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the 80s, man. What a what a decade. Like, yeah. I don't think there'll ever be another decade like the 80s. Yeah. 
No. Um, I, mean, I, I lived in the 80s. Yeah, so. yeah, that was me growing up, you know, all the way through it. And yeah, my later sort of early 20s was the 90s. And the 90s was not like the 80s was like magic era. And yeah. That's not even nostalgia because even you're looking back at old medium and stuff from that time, just there's nothing beats it. Like there, it's it's the attitude, I think, and the mindset. Yeah, such a good like the world was not in a good place. Like no. all through the eighties, everyone like the world was on the verge of nuclear war, just one button push away from annihilation. Uh, some of the worst recessions, you know, coming out of the seventies. And then you have um, the AIDS, the AIDS, pandemic. AIDS pandemic as well. Yeah. The, thing in the 80s that was um but yeah. and that was a death sentence yeah at least now thankfully thanks to research and stuff that's you know it's managed i, I think but, the 80s was was very um but the positivity everything was was experimental you had uh sort of special effects that were just sort of reeling off the sort of late 70s early 80s um in movies you had music, you know, they were bringing in synthesizers and things like this in, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the 80s. And, um, you know, and um, I think every, everything in the 80s started off sort of near experimental, really. And, um, you know, special effects, because if you look at the, the special effects of this film, uh, won an Oscar, of course. They're still um, bloody good. But it was. But There's still, I watched yeah. the transformation scene again, and I'm like, still mesmerized going, that is bloody brilliant. Yeah, if you, if you, um, those Maybe photos today can't do that level. Those photos I sent you, you know, they had one of the werewolf masks on the front of a trolley, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, yeah, and it, it, it sort of reminded me very much of the experimental, um, special effects that Star Wars had. In '77, where they yeah. they had a table tennis table with the the Death Star, more or less made of plastic, um, you know, models like you used to put together over the Airfix, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and this was this was pretty impressive for special effects. I, 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 I'm not a CGI fan, so I, I love. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. Honestly, yeah. it just takes you right. At, at, you know, like a magician. Yeah, you know it's a trick, but when you don't yeah. know, it, you know, I mean, you don't know how the trick's done. And that's the wonder. Yeah, and that's where I think my movies have lost their magic. You know, you know, all oh, right, it's on the computer screen, blah blah blah, VFX, and then you you're totally lost the magic of it. Um, where this, you're still looking, going, wow, how did they pull that off? Yeah. Even you can watch all the effects, but it's still like, how did you have the imagination? To think of doing that and to have the patience. Yeah. Because I think there's a lack of patience today. I think it's part of this one click, you know, everybody gets everything instantaneous. And I can be guilty of it myself at times. Um but back then it was about making you know, I mean there was a vision. Mm. I don't think well obviously we've we've talked about loads of that, that stories where it was due interference, but not as much. That vision was over a decade long, you know. Because if you look at the making of it, John Landis actually had this idea in 1969. And he wrote uh, like a short story thing, mm -hmm. uh, about something that was in his mind back then. But um, everyone thought back then, oh, no, you know, this is a bit OTT and, um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. And it wasn't until like 10 years later that um you know one of the studios thought mm, could work um but yeah oh, you mean studios taking a risk and not uh, yeah, new yeah. unique ideas yeah what a they, 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 concept yeah but uh yeah it was tw 12 years before it actually came to light so. but that's what i'm talking about patience yeah the, you know i mean everyone's like no 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 must have it now must have immediate response people don't know how to build anything anymore as in no. you know it doesn't matter whether it's um an airfx model a brand a concept writing a story mm. putting a screenplay together people want that instantaneous you know oh it's done and then the results immediate but this i think is what made the 80s 
so glorious. And this this movie, I think, shows that. He wanted to make this movie. Yeah. It wasn't about fame, fortune, just this he a creative who has to create. And this was his idea. Yeah. And he got of course the, the best special effects guy at the time, um, Rick Baker, and to actually um, you know, do those special effects and at the time Rick Baker was, you know, top of the top of the list. Everybody mm -hmm. wanted because he went on, of course, Michael Jackson saw um the work he was doing, oh, and John, and thriller, yeah. John Landis and Rick Baker, and he, he saw American Werewolf, and then he wanted them to do Thriller for him, because um, that that pair actually done um, the work on Thriller for Michael Jackson. You can see yeah. it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I I have well, I've loads of regrets in life, don't we all? But um, I would I I wish I could have found a way younger years to get into special effects or something or find an opening just where i grew up just wasn't accessible no. um and everything just a mindset as well everything's too difficult too hard you what do you want to do you know if you don't do the the regular thing then you're weirdos yeah sort of thing. um sometimes i wish i'd taken a chance because i them guys are like the mad scientists i mean they're the frankensteins they're the you know they're the just absolute crazy people the special effects guys in the 80s yeah and it was all about the ideas and what can we come up with and you hear them they're you know i mean each little team had their own recipes and formulas yeah. for blood and for you know using the latex for the skin they all had their own ideas for it and how to put it together um and yeah the, the work absolutely knocked their pan in on a movie but it was love yeah and part of me wishes that i could have got into that or you know, find that sort of thing, or early on, because I wasted so many years, you know, mm. being a creative person, but no outlet. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I, just, just the makeup. Because if you think of the makeup in it that was involved in in this film, and it all had to be done properly, rather than today where they just overdub with CGI, um, you know, this stuff it had to be applied and everything. Because if you think. Um, Jack, his, once he was killed, his first sort of thing was uh, in the hospital talking to him. And he was one style of, of uh, makeup. And then when he was rotting away... Yeah, he was just all the same. Again, if you want to make enough, it actually took hours and hours to put the makeup on to, for him to be like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and the actors went with it too and still kept their performance. Where now they'd be throwing diva fits. Yeah, yeah. Um, God. But the story is that, like, um, not even 15 minutes into this movie, like, this isn't one that's going to keep you dragging on. You know, a lot of movies, oh, we're going to get the wor first werewolf attack and it's going to be like halfway into the movie. No, this just went straight to it. Like, um, 15 minutes, not even, I think it was like 13 minutes, 20 seconds or something, we'll get into the, the actual werewolf attack. Yeah. Um, Yet you had every expectation of it being a slow movie at the start. Yeah. Like, did you find something with the pacing that was interesting with us? Yeah, it's it, it just kept the, the same sort of pace all the way through. You you didn't have oh it's it's boring in this bit. Oh it's 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 better. Oh it's boring again. Did you? Um, it was it was the same pace or more or less all the way through with um you know you. Had, each scene was um, well put together because you had the scene of them in, in the pub and that went straight into the, uh, they left the pub and were on the moors. And I thought the, the bit on the moors was done very well. Mm -hmm. um, because, um, you had them just wondering where the, the werewolf was. He was around somewhere and he was circling them. Again, yeah. exactly how wolves do when they're, when they're hunting you, they circle. Yeah, that's um, clever. You know, that's clever yeah. writing and, I didn't feel disappointed spending time in the pub. No. Through the scene out in the moors. And I didn't feel disappointed that the werewolf didn't appear for like an hour of 30 minutes. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was losing out. You know why a lot of like monster movies or movies like this, you're just yeah. kind of, oh, when's the next monster scene? Oh, when's the yeah. next kill? And you're just marking time through the acting parts. Yeah. Because 
you, you did again you didn't see the werewolf like you said for another 30 minutes but you had this sort of sub story of um david being visited by zombie jack mm -hmm. in, in the hospital and it was just you it was just funny um but out of the blue because if you were thinking uh this is the first time we're watching this film uh you wouldn't have expected this jack to have turned up in the hospital as a a dead um you know um casualty zombie but um yeah. it, it, it was like a little sub story wasn't it he was he was sort of saying trying to get through to his friend that hey you're gonna turn into a werewolf um on and, full moon. yeah and you're gonna do gnarly things and this is only the yeah. beginning and then jack feel this this talk though because there's actually quite a bit of time spent in the hospital yeah, which normally that's something that gets brushed over in a lot of movies. You know, like the good hospital, and then it's just kind of right you're there, and you're right the next day. It's like a sub, you know, mm -hmm. just a plot device. But they actually made the hospital a scene and a character in itself. Yeah, and we'll have to talk about Doctor Hirsch because he's not so tit. Like he's not a pleasant <laughs> bloke. Oh no, he was really having to go at his nurses, wasn't he? Yeah, he's like the personification I said of NHS snobbery. Yeah. Um. That whole I'm up the ladder more than you, you peasant, do as you're told. But it like, happens now. It, it, doesn't it? It's, you, you do get like consultants and everything like that who. Uh, oh, yeah, I've worked for the NHS. It's horrible. Yeah. It's the nast. It's funny that the current professions, and yeah. obviously, I spent a lot of my, I think that's why I'm so cynical now. I spent a lot of my younger years in uh, either voluntary, public sector, or community based you know that sort of stuff yeah and the nice people you know the caring people the helpful people are some of the nastiest folks on the planet yeah and i think this scene actually just brings it out the way hirsch is um just there's no need for that um no. No. absolutely no need that's why i'm i have real problems um deferring to people um my boss is trying to get, you know, has people call him sir. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, nah, it's not happening. I was doing some work in a hospital in London back in, was it 1989, I think it was. And um, um, I was putting some software onto a, um, one of the early installations of computers um, on the front desk of, like, the reception of this I won't mention any names or anything, but suddenly I heard, you incompetent fool. And I, I just went to the, the person beside me, who the hell is that? And then she, she was shaking. And uh, she went, oh, that's Dr. Beep. I went, is that how she speaks to staff? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. But we all stand to attention when she's around. And it was like, oh, my God. And she, what she was doing was really laying into this junior doctor because he gave her the wrong answer. And and it was like, oh, my God. You know, she's down that end of the bloody ward and I can hear her up here, you know, quite clearly. But uh, so, yeah, I think it's a, a thing where... Um, you like, know, this, is what it, this is what bangles me because, I don't know, I was in the army for a wee bit and I wasn't ever treated like that in the army. Like, yeah, there were some and yeah you get screamed at it's all part yeah. of it but when i've seen like the health service and the way they're actually the main people yeah because in the army there's a purpose behind it it's all you know aggression get it you know get up there there's no time for questions it's all about that instant reaction so yeah. there is a method behind it now you get some idiots who um they're weak, so they can't be challenged, so they instantly try and put rank. But there's always a said in the army, it's a rank slide, not a gum shield. And yeah. if you do that on your troops, and especially if you come an NCO yourself, um, you find that nobody, you know, people can screw you over and make you look bad and not play yeah. ball for you. So you yeah. kind of have to have, you know, it really is team effort. Yeah. But I, my mind was absolutely blown, like the NHS and some civil service departments where the people legit think they're gods walking earth just because they've got a bit of a, a yeah. high skill. And you're like, get a grip, you're nothing. And yeah. that's, that's what's always put me off, trying to climb 
corporate ladders and stuff because I'm like, if you are who I have to be, yeah, to be successful, then no, thank you. It's even yeah. in the whole you, you know, what I mean, this whole YouTube sphere. When I see some of the idiots who you know are clickbait types who only get off making content, you know, being antagonistic, yeah, and I'm like, well, if I have to be like that to be successful, then nah, I'm good, yeah, because I would rather come here with a positive vibe and we enjoy talking about some movies and share a few anecdotes and a good times had by all. You know, yeah. it's but the, 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 the whole scene in the hospital. It yeah. almost uh, <laughs> it set me on edge, but Yeah. Yeah. But but again, it was real. It was true to life. It it, it happened and it does happen in, in real life. The, the doctors talk down to the nurses. Um and uh yeah, so uh I'm and then sure. the sister of the ward, like the other flipping uh yeah. battle axe going around, you know, we didn't yeah. I don't think we oh, had a sister in this one. Always reminds me of um remember Hattie Jakes in uh, the carry on films. She was matron. And um Oh and matron. Yeah. <laughs> I said this almost descended in the carry on because um we're getting introduced to uh, Nurse Price. Yeah. Oh, what a dirty stop out she is. <laughs> oh. She had her, she wanted some American meat and she was getting it. And she like, <laughs> she zoned in on Target like straight away. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, feeding like, him. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that. I was actually, you know, all it needed to be was her punching a few other nurses to say, he's mine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or fighting the person with the, you know, Putting the person that was bringing the dinner tray in a headlock so she could do it. Um, Would you call her out of misery? Am I I going to be forced to feed you, David? You know, and slide no more. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, where was nurses like that when I was ever in hospital? Oh, God. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, she she was like not forward about backward about coming forward. Like she's straight in there. Yeah, he was so dippy. His character so dippy, he just wasn't wigging on. Even when she took him home to her flat, and there was only one. Because that's what you do, of course. Like yeah. you're you're in a hospital, and there's no duty of care, or there's no segregation. Mm. You know, you can't be as many patients. You just there's go. This guy, there's this guy who could, he thinks he's a werewolf, and you take him home, and he's seeing his dead friend, and he's having and yeah. like he's borderline hysteria. I know what I'll do. I'll take him home. I need a pet. Yeah. And, and when she gives a whole rattling off, oh yeah, uh, I've had seven lovers. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Blah blah blah. It's like, oh, is this a regular thing? You just um, <laughs> you see a nice you you, you troll the wards. You see a nice patient. Like, mm, yeah, I'll have you. Go oh, back for it. Yeah. You're homeless and uh, like hysterical. I'll take you home. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. The comedy like, like this could have bordered on farce, but somehow it worked. Yeah. Hi. How did this movie work? <laughs> it, it did though. It just flowed, through. and it still works. We we'll still watch it. We we'll still love it. It's still yeah. bloody brilliant movie. Hi, <laughs> and mm. when you see so many attempts at comedy today, and it's awful, and you just cringe the whole way through at the attempts, and it's just so hollow. And yet, you have this. Yeah, it's, I think. Uh, yeah. When he went on that mass murder spree, um, I mean, afterwards when the, um, <laughs> they were in the cinema, the couple who got murdered. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, because um, and you know, so and so. Hello. <laughs> what would you say to someone who's just murdered you? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but leading up, like. The thing is, you're getting fed this that's going to happen. Mm. Do you know why a lot of movies like you get bitten and then they turn the next day or it's just glossed over and rushed through? But this is actually building up yeah. to the werewolf. And I think if it hadn't worked as well, it would have been a flop. Yeah. You know what I mean? The idea, you're going to turn, you're going to do bad things. And Jack, um, I think he has to be the most intelligent ghost character in horror, full stop. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of a I can't think of another time a ghost or an apparition visiting somebody yeah has been done so well and intelligently and that's why I've got a problem with ghosts like um Insidious the Red Door when I watched it 
Um, what do you call him? Josh's character, or you know, Patrick Wilson's character, Josh, and mm. his own father crashes through a, a door to go at his own son, supposedly to try and warn him about what was going to happen. Yeah, and you're like, why can't it just be like Jack? <laughs> yeah, you know, and we'll go through the stages of uh, David just freaking out at first. <laughs> Thinking he's still, you know, traumatized, and then actually accepting the fact that Jack is here and speaking to him and trying to help him as a friend. Yeah, he gave the impression, didn't he? I know you're my mate, but bugger off! I don't want to see you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, um, yeah. But um, even down as far as it does go against the channel's policy, but every rule has an exception. When he was in the the bathroom and he he closes the mirror and he ah! <laughs> and he was behind him, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. But the, the play between them as well, because the friendship was still there. The fact they were able to do that as character actors, yeah. once again, this, yeah, you have special effects. He he could have been oh scary ghost, but the fact that they had the characterizations and it worked, and you actually yeah. saw the bond between them. Yeah, I can't that, see that anymore. If you think of it, that that bond could have continued. He could have had a dead mate because mm-hmm. uh, he was still like mates with him, uh, even though he was dead and in rotting away. It, it it could have continued like um, and continued and continued. He could say, "Yeah, oh, my dead mate. You know, he's coming for a pint with me," sort of thing. Um, because he was he was talking to him as though he was not still alive, but still his mate. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. was that, yeah. You're dead, but you're still my mate, so it wasn't yeah. this. Oh, I've become a ghost, so I have to become like a settle use. And I enjoyed that movie, by the way. Mm. But the stupidity of the ghosts and instead of red, you know, like it's just a trope to do all the time, and it's really aggravating because there's no need for it. Mm. Yeah. And in fact, having a ghost be able to communicate effectively and like this, it shows it can be done and it can be done well. Yeah, and you you're still invested with the character because essentially Jack still tell him you have to kill yourself, mate. You have to die. Sorry to put yeah. this to you, but this is going to get worse. Yeah, <laughs> I'm and sorry uh, we won't have to do it. That's what made me laugh in the cinema as well, where they were all the dead people were discussing ways of him killing himself, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, um, because obviously we get to the first transformation. Yeah, and that has to be. I can't think of a more iconic scene in horror, or even cinema, it's, uh, as David's first transformation. Again, um, does you know, anything but, else even equate? They they showed the hand on um, the making of, and um, how it, it took again took ages to build up the hand, and he had to hold his hand up like this, and uh, and look at it, and do it, and it it was built up, and he had to be in exactly the same position to look at it again. And it was yeah, for the up. camera, or else you look. Yeah. It wasn't like um, you put the dot and it was green screen, and it could just be, yeah. you know, I mean, you had to be, and as an actor as well, you know, you you have to be dedicated to the movie to be putting up a lot. That's yeah. you're there to say a few lines, and then all of a sudden this stuff's sort of mm. being imposed on you. And yeah, I think you have to be invested in the movie just as much as an actor, because um, like look at this writers and actors strike, and they're all just gobbling off, yeah, and. They're no interest in the properties or making film success. They're they're so narcissistic, and it's they're even saying out in the open now. And you just then you don't get behind the movies, but this is more than money and fame. They probably yeah. didn't even know this is going to take off. It was a risky project, so you have to be invested. Yeah, I, one thing that crossed my mind on that transformation was, um, if you think. Um, like the likes of Tom Hanks in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. he he did his he did his thing where he did the weight loss. Yes, um, and the, they had to film it in in order because he was losing weight because he had AIDS, and he got an Oscar for that, rightly so. Um, but if you think of horror, this but there trans- was Christian Bale that exactly the same. In fact, he did it more extreme for the Machinist. Yeah, I don't think he got an Oscar. No. But um, I have no time for the Oscars because it's too much. A, it's a democracy, but and it's not 
I think, reflective of if you the do the world. if you do the equivalent of um, Tom Hanks losing weight to mm. equivalent of of this guy um, David having to do all you know build up all the the makeup and everything and and act as the werewolf right up until the time that they afterwards when you know the the model was going around killing everyone yeah that, that particular uh, bit of the transformation had to be david now is, is there should he have you know been in line for this oscar uh for the transformation because it's it's more or less the equivalent of of you know the, the tom hanks thing in philadelphia um david not funny enough that the actor is the same name david norton um yeah. i'd say more so but this is back the ew horror ew, ew, nose up near yeah. sort of stupidity because if you were producing better i would get it but cinema in the mainstream has been failing for decades yeah. it's just been on downward spiral and horror's just dead true to what it is yeah and yes, there's no shortage of thinkers and horror. Let's not <laughs> be unrealistic, but mm. you've got too many movies like this the stand the test of time, yeah. where something might have got 20 Oscars, but it only gets watched once. It's not like something gets stuck in the Blu ray player 30 years later. Most of the movies are forgotten. Yeah. Um, yeah, because some movies you watch once and you think, I'm never going to watch that again. Mm. I, I've seen American Werewolf. I count this time, so I, I couldn't tell you, but it's it's one that you never get bored with. A bit like watching Faulty Towers on mm -hmm. you know, comedy. Um, you know, you, there's only twelve episodes made, and you never get bored of them. American Wolf is is one of those films that you would put on your list of you just wouldn't get bored with it. You, um, and you do see other it's, you do see other things that you haven't seen, and um, you know previously when you've watched it it's it, just little things that you think oh my god you know and it, uh, even down as far as mistakes but um i won't go into the mistakes because it's an 80s film and, and you know but that's all part of it you know <laughs> yeah, it could be an 80s movies otherwise yeah. and with film especially you know you can't there's no reshoots no, no, and how like movies today will spend almost the same budget again doing reshoots and manage to make it look worse. So yeah. <laughs> I think I can forgive like the 80s with what they had. Because uh, if you take the underground scene, mm. uh, London Underground, they've only got a certain amount of time when the station is closed to film. Um, I think it's three hours at Tottenham Co Court Station, something like that. They had, and um, but. The, the scene in London Piccadilly actually happened in London Piccadilly, you know, where the bus smashed mm -hmm. and the car smashed. And um, they only had a matter of minutes, um, uh, about three or four times, to actually film this while they actually closed, uh, you know, London and Trafalgar Square all around there off. But they were only given minutes to do it. So there was no like reshoots. They had to get it right first time. And that was it. You one that's chance. It. If you don't get it, that's yeah. it. The whole movie is up a swanny. Yeah, yeah. And yet, the still minds have produced great movies. Yeah. At, and yeah. yet today, everything's at their fingertips, and there's nothing but crap out there. Yeah. But right. it's the audience's fault for the the rubbish movies. Yeah. Um. Because. Oh, they just do a, a makeshift village, wouldn't they? And you know, or you know, green screen with part, part of London on the back, and yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's... that would be it now. And there'd be no like yeah. no magic. Um, there was a weird subplot, like, um, I say, we got the first werewolf like transformation, he goes out and does the killing spray, like six people down one night, and it's yeah. funny because it's just such a range of folks. I love that couple though. They were like laughing and giggling about to go to a, a house party with another yeah. couple and then just get wiped out. It was like, yeah. Um, <laughs> cool, but then I have Dr. Hirsch decides, like, his character gives absolutely no indication that he gives a toss. Like, he even <laughs> says to him, um, Could you hold off your mental breakdown till you're out of the hospital and we don't have to deal with you anymore? Yeah. If you don't mind, good sir. Like, straight to his face. Like, um, could you hold that? Because if you have it here, I have to keep you in longer and I want you out to 
Yeah. So we're gonna abuse my nurses some more. <laughs> I need your bed. <laughs> yeah. That's where it would be in this day and age, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh god. Boom storm everything in yesterday, the whole thing made I, uh, some when I was in hospital, I actually had a consultant say that to me, although he was joking around. Um, he was a Colombian uh, uh, consultant and he was hilarious. He'd, he'd tell you jokes, everything, you know. And he comes in one day and uh, I've been in five days and he goes, How are we doing, Mr. Knight? I goes, Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, thanks. That's good because I need your bed. <laughs> That's how he said it to me. But <laughs> Because we were joking around right throughout the, the, the time I was in, you know, and because uh, um, he said, he, what was it he said to me? Oh, he says, um, don't don't die on me. He says, will you? He says, because I'd have to use those bloody things that go, ba dump ba dump like that. He says, and I don't like them. He says, I'm, he says I might get an electric shock myself. <laughs> See? But, yeah, like you said, it's it's all about I need your bed these days. But the way you put it was just hilarious. They wouldn't be allowed now to have a sense of humor. No, no. like um, I just uh, just the way it go. Like, was he personality here? Yeah, not nice side of things. Like that's something that, like I said, maybe political correctness has helped against. Mm. But the pendulum swung way too far. Like yeah. the way he spoke to the nurses, all just disgusting. You know, no need for that whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but then he goes from that to, oh, I gotta investigate on my own time what's going on with this guy. Yeah, I really all of a sudden he's like, I seen the light, I believe the werewolf story. Uh, how many doctors would you know would think, oh, I think I'll go to North Wales or Yorkshire, as a case yeah. might be, and um, investigate while he's why he's thinking he's a werewolf. <laughs> you just wouldn't get it, would you? No, and then it's weird because when he goes into the bar. The the atmosphere the, the mood is completely different. Yeah. yeah. Is that a was that maybe subtle hint in our British class system? Uh, did oh, yeah. Yes sir, yes sir. You know, was there a wee bit of that? Did he did he look um sort of more important, you know? Um, you know, would the people really think when he walked into the oh god, there's a snobby guy walked in uh, Yeah, better manner P's and Q's sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a bit of, was there was that a wee subtle cultural underplay? Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. Because he even point. asked about the pent. Yeah, asked about pentagram. You know, flipping pentangles of flipping American word. Yeah. But um, even asked about that. Oh, that's been there. We just left it for tradition. Like, why couldn't have said that to the two lads? Yeah, that's right. It just been jo- You know, <laughs> why did he go? Why did he go? You made me miss. Oh yes, I that was. I uh, forgot about that. That was brilliant. <laughs> <though. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Here we all know people like that. Yeah, we all know people like that that would actually crack up. That would start a fight. Them, but some bars <laughs> are like you know, it's like yeah. um, if if you see a bar with a pool table, you're like, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> She's eating ninety percent of fight start. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just weird the way they completely change their tune. Yeah, yeah. And he just nips yeah. up and like. Well, it's a long drive back. I'll only have a couple of shots of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink drive. <laughs> yeah. A couple of hundred yeah. miles. Yeah. yeah, with no power steering because that was a... Oh, yeah. I can't remember what he was driving, but it was yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> oh, I could almost feel the bumps. You know, you know them old style tires? Yeah. You had to... Go down, go down, go down. Yeah. Oh. Like, the drive in that... The, like in the country road, it just made no sense. This is like I said, the whole bit in the actual village seems to be the only plot derailing point, yeah, of how <laughs> it came about. And I don't know how it could be done any better. Uh, uh, like I said, the question has to be asked how many consultants would you know would think, What shall I do on my day off? I know I'll, I'll travel all the hundreds of miles up to Yorkshire to find out why this guy, my patients, are. Uh, 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 he's no longer my patient because he's been discharged. He's so, yeah. job yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, oh, even I when he's fly home, even when he's ringing um, the, the nurse up at home, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, again, how many how many nurses' phone numbers do our consultants know? I mean, they wouldn't be allowed to ring him at home, would they? But <laughs> no, that'd be like major no-no. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that yeah. there was no secret that she'd take it away as well was brilliant. Yeah. 
<laughs> so she's a bit of a reputation. Yeah. Oh, is, is David still with you? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we, we saw you cast your BDI on him. We, knew, we know what comes next. We remember the other sex blokes, the other yeah. sex werewolves that come in through the yeah. hospital. Yeah, about seven lovers. Yeah. Which one's <laughs> with you today? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, just uh, that was just hilarious. I was just done so casually to you. Just I don't know. There's a, just a cheekiness to it that, um, like I said, that that could have been like a full comedy thing and derailed the entire movie. But it was just done so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, again, it, it leveled out, didn't it? There was horror. Drama, comedy, horror, drama, comedy, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it didn't it didn't divert. It, it was one equal the other on a, on a level, and and um, you know you you didn't lose the plot because of of what was happening. But uh, yeah, whereas if you take Hereditary, Hereditary was supposed to be a serious horror film. And it, was, it was just a comedy. <laughs> I don't think they expected it to be, um, you know, that, that wasn't the intention that it was, people were going to laugh at it, and they did. But, uh, <laughs> um, there was, um, who was, oh God, my, uh, I was speaking to a director on Saturday, and a fucking Deuce, Josh Deuce. <laughs> Is it Josh? Yeah. What was Deuce? Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Dude, I've just my head scattered because I'm talking to so many people at the moment. But he was asking me about um what's his face, Jordan Peele. Yeah. And I've no I've no time for him personally, just he, he's too much of a toxic individual. But he had told me he was a comedy writer. Oh right. Initially before he went into horror. Yeah. I see no comedy in his like if you're a comedy writer, then you're perfect for horror. Aren't you? You know, sense of humor, bring it bring jokes, levity. Um you should yeah. be making Absolutely top-notch horror movies. Yeah, I I got no the three that I've seen of his, no levity whatsoever. Yeah, and you think a comedy writer would understand that, and especially if you're a horror fan. Yeah, yeah. and that's I find that very strange finding that out about the that director. Yeah, yeah. where this um, the comedy is. So subtle, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it, it's it's like it's like I said, you know, when he when he was in hospital bed, um, if you didn't know the film, um, you'd see this this guy stood there, you know, and all his face is like, and you say you you just think, oh my god, you know, you, I never expected that, but. Um, uh, it's a mixture of comedy plus serious stuff because he's actually um, is he losing his mind because he thought he was he was losing his mind didn't he seeing these mm -hmm. dead bodies so you had the serious side there but you had the comedy bit that he was there <coughs> um, but yeah. yeah and then obviously the the scene and the, after the first you know it's first transformation mm -hmm. and he wakes up naked in the zoo and. Those wolves look a bit too happy to see him, so you kind of wonder what went on there. Yeah. Probably best not talking about that. <laughs> but they look like some happy wolves. <laughs> um, and then he, you know, like I said, the whole farcical scene of a run around naked, hide, yeah. like that was just pure comedy. And to be honest, that could have been done so differently. He could be, he could have woke up, you know. Naked, covered in blood, and ah, and all this. Yeah. But they decided to make a, a joke out of it to bring you back down again. And, yeah. and uh, the thing is, he was stood at the bus stop in that red coat that he'd stolen. Yeah, no you didn't think anything of it because there are people like that in London, aren't there? That they they wear these clothes, red coats, or whatever. In in uh, it's London, the sort of thing that you would see, isn't it? it in the thing is, London's lost its um personality yeah like i don't know you know i've been in london back and forth you know the first time like proper staying in london was 1996 mm. and that's you know you, the quirkiness was there and the, you know all the things that associate with london now it's uh i can't describe it it's just bland yeah. like all that goodwill or you know quirkiness and fun is gone out of the city 
Yeah. It's really a depressing place. I'm glad I don't actually live right in it. I'm glad I've at least get a chance to escape. Yeah. You know, I'm only going there if I'm going for a reason. Um, but yeah, you would have seen that. Or Speaker's yeah. Corner or whatever. You know, I mean, just all these characters, and that's what they gravitated to. Yeah. Because he, he stood there and uh, he said something, I can't remember what he said, and, and all the people around him were going, as if to say, weirdo, there's one of these London weirdos here. And, yeah. And, but, uh, they, they didn't say something like, oh, yeah, where'd you nick that coat from? It, it was just like, there's a weirdo in a woman's coat here, um, sort of thing, you know. And they must have thought, like, oh, he's, he's like, purchased that for himself, which... They do. They go down Soho, don't they? And yeah, crap. more and you know, what I mean, anything's possible, and that's. But then again, that's a whole British thing, isn't it? Yeah, I remember. Um, back in the day, do you remember uh, Alice Cooper? Yeah, when he did the tour, remember he did that billboard with him naked with a snake. Yeah, and America, they all lost their minds over it. They're like, <laughs> and when he brought the show to London. Everyone just come up with him. <laughs> Fair play to you, mate. I yeah, would have done that. Did. You know, <laughs> just patting him in the back and just going, "Yeah, you're you'll do us," sort of thing. Um, yeah. And that's that's what annoys me. We've lost that. We've lost that spark of fun. Yeah. At the moment, and it really does make me sad. And uh, again, I think uh, a certain degree is political correctness. That's yeah. uh, like I say, and when we see Doctor Hirsch, the way he spoke to nurses, that's where political correctness has been useful. Yeah. Because that did happen, and the you know, fact is, just it still does happen, just in a different way now. So you don't yeah. stop people being nasty arseholes. They're just yeah. doing it a different way. The the ones that learn to play the system are still dipshits. Yeah. Um. I think we just went too much the other way, and I just miss. I think that's what this movie represents: that sense of fun, and you can be in a horrible, horrifying situation, and this is still no less gruesome. Like it doesn't pull out of its punches when it comes to the actual. The kills and the horror of the werewolf, but yeah. there was still time to have a bit of fun and like bring you back down again. The moments of levity, because yeah. if you the, the cinema that he went to in the West End was uh, it was a porn cinema, yeah, it was a porn cinema. I, I, mean, <laughs> I will, I will put my um, I will name my color the mask, so to speak, and I will yeah. say that is the funniest scene in horror yeah. comedy ever, yeah, because if you think he was. Turning into the werewolf, and there was a screen on going, <gasps> <gasps> and then the British British poor movies always had that weird interrupting thing. Yeah, yeah. So somebody yeah. just come in and go, like the first guy come in, and you like today you just think he was just coming in to join in, but yeah. now it's like, oh, and I told you you stopped doing this to me, and she looks up and goes, I don't know who you are, and he's like, oh, sorry about that, walks out. <laughs> you know, yeah. That was bored. It was just that they used to do this weird thing, or they'd have like a sex scene, and then it'd be like a weird pause to do something daft, and then they'd go back to it again. It was, um, yeah. weird, but that was you know, I mean, that's playing in the background. But he's sitting there with Jack, and then he's introducing them to all the people. And the first guy in the sub was just raging with him, <laughs> just yeah. you bastard, you killed me, my wife, my children it's... without a father, I hate you. It was a bit of an ironic thing, though. Um, outside that cinema, there were two police officers. Um, I can't think of, um, I'll think of their names. Now. But anyway, the two police officers that were outside playing police officers, um, you know, uh, outside the cinema there, actually became police officers in the bill. Uh, so they, they carry on. Still on. No, the bill ended... Dun, 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 dun. It's, it's only on UK Gold now. Um, All right. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a because I'm a big Bill fan. I still watch it. What's his face? One of the main characters out of the Bill was in Strippers versus Werewolves. There's yeah. a lot of soap actors, and that's why oh God, that movie is terrible. But, um, I'm trying to think of his name now. Um, there was uh, anyway. There, there were two actors in it. Um, that went into the bill. One as the chief superintendent, I think it was, and another one as a detective constable. Um, I can't. But anyway, they, they they actually played coppers in in uh, John what? Salthouse. He was a he was a police officer at the mm -hmm. cinema. Um, 
you had um, John Altman, who um, played um, in EastEnders. He was Doc Cotton's son. He was a, a police officer. And there was another one. And I can't think of the life of me what he was called. Because that was the old joke, was it? When people left on soap opera, they always end up in the bill. Peter Ellis. Peter Ellis. I remember him. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was in it, and he was a police officer. But they they went the two went in to be police officers in the bills, so, which was which started three years after nineteen eighty four. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but then again, the TV world um, in the UK was like minuscule. Yeah. So there's like a bunch of you know in a lot of incestuousness between the channels and uh, mm. people ended up in one show or the other. You know, it was just a uh, where it was, it was fair play. Um, but yeah, that scene in the the cinema, like, it's just, more like yes. just comedy go like all his victims, and then that's when Jack yeah. explains to him. Oh, by the way, this is going to happen every every month. More people are going to turn up. He never addressed the fact because he's decomposing, and he says he's the walk of the earth permanently. Yeah. This is a you know a in limbo, yeah, in limbo until. The bloodlines kill, but what happens when he decomposes? <laughs> yeah. Is he gonna bit walk around like they did? did, the, did um, the maybe for the sake of um the effects, did the maybe speed that process along a bit too much? Oh, I don't know. Did they maybe have dialed it back a bit because, like, say he hadn't met his end and he made it the next month, would there have been a jack? Yeah, at the rate he was decomposing. I the, yeah, I think probably they they only had the one hour thirty minutes of the film, didn't they? It's, uh, yeah, it was just one of those things that you think about. Like, mm, that's he's yeah. he's falling apart right quite rapidly. Um, yeah. What happens after he gets to a certain point where he's actually fall falling apart? Yeah, just be a, a skeleton with bloody. Bits Does somebody else him? have to put him in a basket? You know, one of the other victims yeah. and carry yeah. him about. But, um, yeah, that cinema, that cinema was classic. Um, and again, like I said, these the all these dead people discussing how he should kill himself <laughs> was yeah, you know, shoot yourself through the head. Well, put you put the gun in your mouth just to make sure you, you don't know? mess and <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, take pills. Oh no, that's not effective. You know, and uh... <laughs> yeah. um, just so casual about it, it's like, yeah, but that worked. And like I said, that to me, that was the funniest scene in horror, like of yeah. all, all movies. Mm. And just yeah. the way, and Jack was the character that I think pull, put it all together. He was like the, I think if it had been a different actor for Jack or a different characterization, that wouldn't have worked. No, no, because he was, he was out of the two boys, wasn't he? He was the one, he was. Not the funniest, but he was the one that came out with the sort of American humour, didn't he? Yeah, he was the sort of wisecracking one, you know. That was his... he said to the sheep, "Ha, huh, bye, girls." Yeah, you know, that's the sort of thing uh, you, you would have got from. Uh... But once again, even that set his character up. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's simple. Do you know me? Sometimes, um, like I hear today, where movies beat you over the head. This is the funny character. Poof, poof, yeah. poof. You will laugh, and you're like, yeah. no. But they already set him up as the Joker. Yeah, again, the he, them. it was the natural character, wasn't it? He mm. was. The two boys were together, and they were, you know, you could tell they were gelling. And and one just come out because he was a, an American. He had that American sense of humor, like sheep, bye girls, you know. And and um, yeah, it it didn't deter anything from the fact that they were two boys out on a hiking. Um, yeah. Uh, they, were, they were just two young lads who would have that cheeky sense of humour, really. But, uh, yeah, and that's uh, no, like I said, you showed that, and then it goes up actually to the cinema, and he's just like, "Ah, yeah. here soon, dear, that you killed him last night." Hi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that was class. That made the cinema win him. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That scene you alone. Know, you know, so and so and so so. Hi. <laughs> oh, but um, yeah, that was really funny. Yeah, um, and then we we'll get to the, you know, the final transformation and just all hell's break loose. The, um, one question I have to ask on the trans, mm -hmm. the big transformation one there is, how does he get out of the house? 
because there was no sort of doors or windows broken or anything. And uh, how does he get out of the house? Does he go up to the door, open the door? And go out? There's no sense there is how that werewolf got out of... Yeah, of true enough. Or whatever. Is it? No, because it was just... That was it. And then he'd locked himself out of the house. And yeah. Was that... Did the windows... Remember had to climb in the window? Yeah, but it wasn't broken. Wasn't that? So that was before he transformed, out. wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, just, just an observation. There were big enough windows. If one was open, he had jumped out of it. But... <laughs> but you didn't really... Um, yeah, you didn't mind, though. That's something you just didn't... You, you wouldn't have thought about it, really. No, but... it was the... Like I said, it's a pub. was a bit that got me. Mm. Um, just because that... Their actions made no sense, and it could have just... The whole movie could have just stopped right there. Yeah. <laughs> With a wee bit of common sense. And then when Hirsch randomly goes up, they completely change their tone, so they proved they can act innocent. Yeah. Um, you, you could say uh, again if it didn't end there you had this guy in a hospital bed claiming to be a werewolf and having all these bad dreams um, and um, you know saying he was going to go around killing people um, why was he allowed out <laughs> yeah because that would get you sacked it could have ended there they could have said right you're going in the nutty hospital <clears throat> Yeah. From there. <laughs> and this is where I think the comedy side where I think the movie was kind of self-aware yeah they're like if we try to make us straight and so serious it won't work because mm. you'd have to you know it would have to be a two hour long movie which is what the I think that's the trap we've fallen into now yeah is because they're so because nobody has a sense of humor today and they're so straight laced and up their own, so uptight and up their own backsides. That's why these movies are now two and a two and a half hours long because they have to explain everything. Yeah. Where this movie went, let's throw a bit of comedy in, let's make it that we're not taking it too seriously so people can slide, you know, yeah. forgive a lot of the <laughs> sort of plot errors because we've only got so much time to show this. Yeah. yeah. I'm a film like, you know, you very rarely see anything over 90 minutes. I, th I think 90 minutes for this one was, was a good time because it, I think that's what kept the continuity of the horror and the comedy. You're enjoying together. yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it brought it in uh, and edged it along, you know. Mm -hmm. I, th I think if it had been a two hour movie, it would have been, it could have turned on the to being actually um, boring in bits. Yeah, it would have, yeah, it would have slowed right down. The pacing would have. Got lost. <laughs> they would have over explained things that didn't need to be explained. Yeah. The, the plot would have got convoluted. Like I said, I'm making a joke about the pub and how they just needed to just kick them out the door for the plot to happen. Yeah. But say they had to slow that down, you yeah. would have went down that whole oh, go. We're waiting four hours for the werewolf to happen. You know, where 13 minutes yeah. and 20 seconds, whatever it is, boom, and straight away, you know what's happening. Yeah. Um, no mess about. Right. You know, they, they could have gone into the pub, had a meal, uh, had a few pints, yep. talked to the locos, and it would have been heard really the right. mystery. And maybe yeah. somebody would have had a book, yeah. And yeah, that wouldn't have worked. Or they had it done a conspiracy that he didn't go to the hospital to cap them there because blah blah blah. Well, it wouldn't have been anywhere near the movie that it was, yeah. 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 But the scene in this when he transforms in the cinema. And the police are, and how come the police weren't carrying their truncheons? I thought that was very strange. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they used to have the old wooden ones back Yeah, then. it was the, the, the proper, like, break your head knuckles sort of thing, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't like the American night, nightstick. It was like the wee short, uh, this ball. Like, a, I suppose the equivalent between a baseball and a cricket ball. One's yeah. putting you in hospital for a month in a coma if it hits you in the head. The other isn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, you were you know, you were saying about um, the NHS with the, the doctor being nasty to the nurses. Yeah. If you think of the two police officers, two detectives, one was, um, you know, uh, a senior over the other. One one was a complete hazard. <laughs> and he was contradicted. But I could, I could see the senior officer's uh, problem, though. He was contradicting him in front of witnesses and people. Yeah. And you're like, 
mate, if I was if you were doing that to me, I'd take you like I hate that. Uh even in the normal workplace, say yeah. you're having something with a customer and somebody comes in and completely undermines you in front of that customer. Yeah. I want to take that person out the back and have like some very, very strong words yeah. with them. <laughs> um that is completely like the senior officer completely justified because that guy was a plank. Yeah. Yeah, no. That there are conversations you have off the side. That that senior officer then was um, a victim, wasn't he? Outside the the cinema, mm-hmm. the, well, he the turned up his head, but not off. Come out and bit his head off. <laughs> you know, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, that um, that was carnage. That has to be like in such a short period of time. The brutality of the Piccadilly yeah. Circus scene. Yeah, because cars smashed. You had people. Not even to do with the werewolf. Yeah. People being crushed and run Actually, over. the police officer, he's standing there and the car just go, meep, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. Like, it would give Final Destination a run for us, wouldn't it? Let's oh, be honest. Yeah. Definitely. Um, mm. People smashing out windscreens. Like, it was yeah. absolute carnage. And it was nothing to do with um, the world. That's the only... I would never like to see this movie remade, except for the Piccadilly Circus scene. But I wanted to include see those dipshits and the mopeds. Yeah, I'd watch out for hours if somebody just read that that scene. But all those dipshits around the moment and mopeds with their L plates, the delivery drivers and all. Yeah, I just love to see him getting smashed up in a movie and carnage because yeah. I, I'm driving in a van, right? I I go yeah. Tuesdays and Thursdays collecting them, and they dipshits are freaking bumping up against it and stuff, and like weeding the night, and they're they're just stopping and spinning around mid, and they're. Yeah. I even saw them in the motorway, and like. What are you doing in the motorway? Get the f- um, you know, I get pro. I don't normally. I'm quite a chill driver. I drive like a granny sometimes. Yeah, but those people drive me up the wall because of just no regards, and also they're playing the system. Because obviously, you can get 120 cc on a uh, learner's license. License. Yeah. So they're just playing the you know, using the loophole not to get a proper license or training. They've jumped on these things and they're just flying about the place. Yeah. No regard whatsoever. Yeah. And I just love to see that Piccadilly scene, except if it was with those guys. Like, I got the horror of this because it was absolutely tragedy. Because there was no need. You know, people were just because of absolute craziness, where obviously, if anyone's driven in London, would understand how easily this could happen. Yeah. Um, But if it was those guys, I'd be like laughing. I'd just like, ah, more plays, more, throw more <laughs> mopeds on. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I've never got a bike license. I refuse the drive. You no way at like 15 you can get a, a provisional license, yeah, and a mo- you could drive a moped. I refused because you didn't have the equivalent 120 cc's available or the 125. Sorry, yeah, so you couldn't get like a um, remember a friend of mine, he lent me his Honda Fireblade a 125, and I fucking near totaled it. That, that sort of put me off bikes. <laughs> that's a <laughs> horror story. Um. But yeah, I would I would refuse. I wouldn't be seen dead in one of those things. No. Um I'd I'd sooner walk than my legs fell off than getting them on them horrible looking crust. I never I never understood the mod scene. <laughs> I never understood well, how somebody would think they look cool in one of those dipshit bikes. My dad was six foot four, quite a um broad shouldered guy, and he used to have a fifty cc moped. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> People will pay stupid amounts of money for those Vespas now. Yeah, I know. And I'm just like, why? It's like yeah. somebody that buys the, the big chunky gold necklace, you know, the, the, the things are almost like chain links. Yeah. And they think it looks good. And you're like, no, nah, mate. No, you, don't. Just, you, you don't do <laughs> that. Okay. You look cheap. Uh, you actually look cheaper. Um, mm. Spend a quarter of that money on a decent suit, and you'd be all right. I was uh, in uh, Camden Town Market um, back when we were last, the time before we were in London, and uh, there's a shop in there that sells all the old um, mod gear. You know, and But the thing, I went in there and I went, I used to have one of them. I used, to, I used to have boots like that, you know, and it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> was I really that bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that movie, um, Last Night in Soho? 
Oh yeah. Where she yeah. goes, she's the art student. She goes to buy all the chic stuff, and it's like flipping two hundred fifty quid for a couple of items. You're like, whoa, yeah. no, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, don't do fashion. I don't. I can't justify. No, I will spend stupid amounts of money on nerdy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and not not think twice about it. <laughs> but the thought of going in and spending money on a fashionable item that's going to be out of like out of fashion in like oh, yeah. a few weeks when the fad's gone <clears throat> i can't justify it to myself no i'll just i'll just buy stuff that's on the sale you know if it's like this t-shirt <laughs> um you know if i like it uh, and it's on sale i'll i, I won't that's pay it. for it Some, but I, I would never pay 40 quid for this t-shirt when God, i only paid I wouldn't... 40, when i paid 14 for it <laughs> You know, just because I waited till six months down the line when it's sort yeah, because you either still like a shirt, like a yeah. shirt, or you don't. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, don't get that. Except, of course, if you just want to spend some money on our merchandise, please feel free. You know, yeah. always welcome to support <laughs> the channel. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's there's some things worth paying a wee bit of money for. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, that scene. Um. Yeah. It's just absolutely mental, like yeah. craziness. Um. And to think it happened in the place where it happened, because, mm -hmm. um, like I said, 1981, you couldn't have had a, a makeshift green screen with just a London backing, you know. No when... chance. It would have looked, <coughs> it would looked like um, a pantomime. Yeah. Do you remember Prisoner Cell Block H? I never actually saw that. Okay. Um, obviously, you're familiar. It's a I, I've it's heard Australian it. soap opera based on a female right. prison, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the set was so bad that when they slammed one of the prison door, the whole wall wobbled. Yeah. Right. But there's this, the, they introduced a new thing called the halfway house, where apparently yeah. you get out and you, you stay there for a bit before you go back into society. Yeah. The front door was like a gap. And then it was a bit of pantomime, like backdrop to yeah. represent the street. <laughs> I, <laughs> I always remember that to this day. You know, uh -oh. that's what they did to make it look like a street. And they'd open the door, and sometimes they forget to play the traffic sound. Yeah. So it'd be dead <laughs> quiet, and then they press the button to play the traffic sound part of the way through the scene. <laughs> or sometimes it started and they haven't opened the door yet. And then yeah. it would, they'd switch off the tape to like the traffic sound would stop. And, and sometimes people are walking past, and that thing would wobble as well. <laughs> uh, and that's what it would have looked like. Um, yeah. That was, yeah, that was if you go look up Prisoner Cell Block H, um, look at some of the clips. Oh my god, that thing was awful. It was Dennis, those... Dennis Norden used to do the outtakes uh, on uh, ITV, and uh, he showed one uh, in the same context as what you're describing with Crossroads, the you know, the soap that used to be on years ago. Oh, Crossroads uh, Motel, um... yeah, and um, there was a there was an outtake. Same thing. It just used to be like a sheet of ply or something or plasterboard, and someone <laughs> closed the door, and the set went bang. <laughs> <laughs> See, you uh, wouldn't get that now. And the outtakes. Uh, in fact, if you look at the out, no, I have stick it all on YouTube. The outtakes for the latest superhero thing. Yeah, and it's the actors pretending to make mistakes and pretend to laugh and joke, mm. considering they haven't got a personality between them. Because they don't have that magic anymore of um, being able to actually have rapport, or there's no magic behind the movie yeah. making. So they'll have to do all these weird, contrived, fake outtakes to try and make themselves relatable. And it actually is worse because it's so <laughs> fake and set up where yeah. you see something like that and you're like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. But you think as well, like, like they, you said, they the closest own... Piccadilly circuits off. They did this in like a few minutes and then they had to clean up. Yeah. In wow. Reopen, reopen, you know, Trafalgar Square, picked mm -hmm. the second there to reopen it. And it was, it was, they had, I'm sure it said four, four um, aspects they were allowed um, of only a few minutes of time. And after that, that, that was it. Um, so they had to get it right uh, in a short amount of time. And, and, uh, and then get it all cleaned up and out. Yeah. Now you were on about remakes. <clears throat> um, John Landis's son, can't remember his name, um, was rumored to have um, 
been thinking of a remake back in 2016. I hope so, somebody had him a good slap. Um, well, a bit of a bad thing, uh, according to the um, research I did, was um, at the time he got um, sort of charged or um, suspected of certain things in uh, just like um, Jim Davison and uh, Cliff Richard did, if you get my meaning. <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, um, Operation yeah. Nutri. Um, members, so members of Jimmy Tavel Club. Uh, the, uh, the item, uh, the, the film remake was shelved. It's um, funny, Jim Davison, he still talks about that today, and he's like, are, are you not angry at happening? Like, no. Mm. I was completely cared, but I'm glad at least they investigated. It's when they don't investigate. He's actually, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, he was perturbed that he was called in. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, I'm glad. Anytime. That's the police doing their job. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, for all his bad things, he, I, I thought the way he looked at that was was fabulous. But, uh, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so there was going to be a remake. Um, if you check on it when you, when we close then, it's, uh, yeah. it was John Landis' son who was going to think on remaking it. But that would have been a CGI mess. Yeah. You wouldn't have had the Rick Baker... Well, know, doing we've this. had the sequel. We know how bad it can get. Oh. I think the sequel proved Leave Us Alone. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was just awful, wasn't it? It's... Was, that's, a, that's another aspect. That's, uh, no, no, we're not reviewing it because I'm not watching that. <laughs> Sorry, no. Um, um, if you want to watch it out I, there, go ahead. I, can't say I didn't watch it because I did. Um, but um, it was one of those films where I thought, oh my God. The Eiffel Tower scene. Oh. There's awful CGI. Like, there's how it got ruined. Even, even from there, you knew what type of movie it was going to be. Yeah, but you wouldn't have even got that far in the Eiffel Tower. There's so much security. Um, you know that, but then again, they took there's these two legable lads, and then the two protagonists and that are just yeah, you no, know, you know, what I mean, they're they're the type that you don't want, you know, what I mean, you'd happily feed to the werewolf, mm. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. But enough of that. Um, yeah, I have to say, the scene with SO19 that they're loading their magazines in the van. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know they, but they could have done a hundred things except that. That was just stupid. Yeah. But they, they wouldn't have shot anyway with, because uh, the girl was stood there saying "I love you" to David when they, he went to attack. They wouldn't have shot while she was there. No, and um, um, probably, the saved her, line of probably saved her life. But the chances at the distance they were, as you probably know as well, being in the army, you know. The chances of them getting a, a shot with all the, the wind that could have been there, you know, they, they would have shot her because yeah, the, the would have shot her. Werewolf was actually behind her, more or less. Yeah, and then they showed the side on shots. Yeah. You're like, yeah. what? They, they would have shot the girl. And, um, but anyway, <laughs> they shot him. And if you notice how many, how many rounds he had in him. And um, you know, a three where, where they turn were the, turn the thigh and one, yeah. yeah, it was like three shots, but they were different parts of the body. And um, so, out of all the shots that were fired, because in quite a lot of officers actually fired, yeah, it was a big lineup. It was like that's which, that's, which that's, where that's where the movie kind of descends into farce, you know, and it, yeah, you kind of wonder if it's done deliberately, yeah. I almost think those scenes were done deliberately. To bring a bit of daftness to it to make you go, well, yeah, it's not taking itself too seriously, so we'll forgive any like genuine mistakes, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because that was just Keystone Cops, you know. Yeah, Who'd you call that idiot was running about? Remember years ago? And that's when the Met really, or it wasn't the Met, it was fucking. Do you remember him the bald head? He, he went and he hid in the bushes and stuff and went the rampage. I uh, oh. can't remember his name. And the Moat. police were just Moat. everywhere. Rail Moat, was it? Moat, Moat, yes. Yeah. Rail Moat. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, that's that was... what that's... That, that scene with the cops reminds me of the Royal Moat thing. It was just the... They look, they're absolutely embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, going back to the music, um, 
the opening one was done by Bobby Vinton, and then they put in Sam Cook's Blue Moon. Um, you have Moon Dance by Van Morrison, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Bad Moon Rising by Credence Clearwater. Um, the Marcells Blue Moon. Um, yeah, so it's three versions of Blue Moon: the Marcells, Sam Kirk, and Bobby Vinton. That must have taken some workload to get that. It's that sort of attention to detail when you think about you know getting those licenses sort of like before. Like one yeah. one coconut machine, somebody digging their heels in saying, "No, I want more money or whatever else." Could it derail this? But so many things, and that's what I'm saying about the good nature of the eighties. Even though we're still the cutthroat businesses and all, and there's still problems. Mm -hmm. Um, as we talk about the Clive Barker movies, um, but there was a good natureness that allowed this stuff to happen. This couldn't happen today because one party would dig their heels in and be difficult just to make headlines or, mm. you know. Uh, just to ruin things. Mm. And you'll always get that one artist who will say, no, I don't want my song linked to a horror film. Um, you know, again, the prejudice. Um, well, they're, they're snorting stuff that they shouldn't be and doing stuff with people that shouldn't be without yeah, permission. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? The same people are, oh, oh, those horrible horror movies and they're, they're caught like yeah. up the old and gnarly shit of the day and they're like, okay, mate, yeah, preach on. Yeah, yeah you're, you're perverted, mate. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think uh, all in all, it's, um, I mean, I love the movie. It's it's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it's an American werewolf. I wonder. Um, this will be one for obviously the comments that everyone not watching the stream. But does anyone not like this movie? Did, did you know that um, critic-wise, um, there were um, a couple of critics. Um, I'm trying to think who it was now. You just they slammed it. Um, I'm trying to think where I saw it. Well, there's the fact you don't even know their names. You know how important were they? Um, critics are. Um, um, I'm gonna say it today too. The critic score and the audience score. You know, yeah. there's such a disconnect as well. Yeah. Um, Rotten Tomatoes loved it. Um, Metacritic loved it. Empire loved it. Halliwell's Film Guide. Um, Described the film as a curious but oddly endearing mixture of horror film and spoof. And that's uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. There was farcical yeah. elements to this, and I think they were put in deliberately to lighten the tone and bring you along for a ride. That's what makes the whole it's such a weird mix, and it could have went south. You mean too much of one thing. Yeah. And the felt the film would have collapsed. There'd be no enjoyment out of it. Roger. Roger Ebert, in his book Comedy Horror Films, A Chronological History, 1914 to 2008, he slammed it. He gave it two stars and stated that an American werewolf in London seems curiously unfinished, as if director John Landis spent all his energy on spe spectacular pieces and then didn't want to bother with things like transitions, character development, or a suitable ending. Um, the ending, I'll agree with him on. The ending just came to an abrupt stop. Yeah. Um, and they could have had him transform back. But yeah. that was like my final question. Well, about, you know, did they run out of budget it, or what? Well, it was, wasn't he? He was dead. He's, yeah, but he just... Like a human. Um, I, I, think the, I thought the ending was, was perfect. I thought, you know, he was shot just as, like... Um, the guy on the moors, when the villagers shot the werewolf up there, he transformed back and had several bullet holes probably in the same position. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I thought, how further, how much further could it go? You know, would it have been another werewolf um, going down the same route? Mm -hmm. um, so it left it all open for the imagination, I think, really. Uh, I thought the ending was, was just perfect. Um, so it just seemed quite abrupt. I think that was it. It was just yeah. so abrupt. Yeah. Considering how the pacing had been so even throughout the movie, the mm. end just went, oh, right, there he is. Camera shot, poof. And that song, which I can't remember, was a weird song to finish on. Because uh, it went from, like, really poignant, heavy moment to, like, a sort of lighthearted song. Yeah. Um, I think music 
Like, if you think my criticisms are minuscule with this movie, yeah, like they're they're nitpicking almost for nitpicking sake. Yeah, that's why I'd be interesting. Um, like, what's that guy's favorite movie? That's usually the barometer test, isn't it? If somebody's slamming a movie, okay, what do you actually like? And if yeah. you see what they like, that'll give you an indication of right whether they're worthy of review or not. If that makes sense, because mm. not everyone's going to like. This is one of the, I think, universally loved movies. Mm. Even if you're not a horror fan. That, that Roger there's a Ebert. Lot to, there's a lot to enjoy in this movie. That Roger Ebert. I think your book's crap. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> one star for you. <laughs> yeah, one star for you. Then Amazon will flip out, you know. <laughs> oh, God, see it. The latest Amazon ones. Bing, bing, bing. Five stars from blah, blah, blah. Bing, bing, bing. It's like, oh, oh God. God, yeah. So, uh, the cringe <laughs> yeah but this is um i think you'd agree this is a universally loved movie yeah and, and it's uh, not just a classic of horror but a classic of cinema and once again we see the prejudice against horror mm. that yeah. it should have got more it should have been raised up there more I'm, I'm sure this is one that um wasn't shown in every cinema um no like a limited run yeah it, it, it was uh, they were very picky on who showed it because of things like the the head being bitten off and you know the werewolf where when he had um well know, the sex he, scenes alone would have um limited that anyway jack had his more or less his guts all gone yeah just completely um eviscerated all right, all right. sorry it's gone um yeah um it was it was one that not all cinemas would show um, so uh, I, I know Plymouth showed it at Drake Cinema, but they didn't show it anywhere else. They oh, it did win. Well, I was Chris doing some research in the background. It did win Best Makeup Oscar. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. won several other awards as well, didn't it? Um, that must have been, um, they must have been three gritted teeth. Yeah, it was, ah, no, I don't uh, want uh, Icky horror movie. Uh. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what? Part of me wouldn't want it any other way, though. No. Because I, I would hate hard to become mainstream. I, d I don't think it was worthy of something like Best Actor. No, no, no. Not um, that. Um, or, you know, Best Film. Perhaps Best Film. Well, um, possibility there. Um, but it all depends what it was up against. Yeah. Um, well, but, the thing is, you enjoy it. You watch, like, some... This is my whole thing with awards, especially yeah. industry awards. Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily reflect the public. If you stick a movie on and you can watch it multiple times and enjoy yourself each time, the movie's done its job. Yeah. And this is where I don't like the whole, is it high art? Is it not? And all this nonsense. And especially with um, authors and writing, where people, is it really a novel? Is it really a book? Is it really a writer? You know, all this pretentiousness. Yeah. Um, that destroys, I think, creativity. Where... What you want at the end of the day is you create something and if somebody enjoys it, the job is done. Yeah. It doesn't matter what language is used or effects or the story is. If you've achieved that, then what more do you need to do? Yeah. And if I can stick this on again every I say I watch this at least twice a year. Because it's one you always go you can always go back to and know you're gonna have a good time. Yeah. It wasn't a chore to really watch this again. It wasn't dated. Like this is set in the eighties, and it's not dated at all. No, no, it's 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 still the like the. You can watch it if it's if you want something horror, or you can watch it if you want something comedy. Mm -hmm. But um, but even the but, setting, if that makes sense. Basic, you know, some of some of the things that you see horror wise, you'd see today in today's film. But, um, but they would be CGI rubbish. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's just the knowledge of this was done piece by piece on special effects, mm -hmm. and it, it hasn't. It looked just as real, if not more real, than you would get today. And that's that's the way I, because I, like I said, I'm not a great lover of CGI anyway. But no. and so it's the sort of thing I would watch, um, you know. So, but it's it's never lost its, you know. It's still, it's known as a cult film. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I imagine it'll still go like on. Still be... 
You yeah. know, Lost, Lost Boys is now a cult film. And, uh, um, Would this go into the category of, okay, non-horror person, um, I, I want to watch horror movies, but I don't want to watch torture porn, for example. Where do I start? Yeah. Yeah, if, if someone... American wants Werewolf. To... There you go. American Werewolf in London. Start there. Yeah, it's... Um... Well, this is actually one that, um, you know, I, I've said exactly the same thing to my son. Um, you know, when we've wanted a, a movie to watch when he's got back from work when I lived uh, in Plymouth, you know, it's, it's, oh, you know, what should we watch? Oh, American Werewolf? You know, I've got it on Blu-ray or DVD, I think I had it on initially. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, there's that one. Uh, Lost Boys was another one that we used mm -hmm. to watch. Um, um, but it's, it's one of those that you can watch over and over again. As I said, just like comedy was with Faulty Towers, uh, that they only made twelve episodes. You never get fed up with. It's just... universal, you know. There's there's like a universal message that can go out to people. Yeah, Do you know, and imagine in twenty twenty three talking about bringing people together rather than splitting them apart. What a mad idea! Mm. We we must be extremists. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, here's an idea. Let's all pick something we enjoy and get along. <laughs> oh, oh, heretic! Oh, bad person! Awful! Yeah, I'm trying to find the awards because it's it's won several awards this film. Um, I can't, I'm trying to find them now. Um, Even without the awards, you know, the, the fact that this movie still holds up. Yeah, it's, um, and that's what else does it need to do? Awards. There we go. Um, all right, it also won the Saturn Award for Best Horror Film, the Saturn Award for Best Makeup, Saturn Award for Best Actress, Jenny Agatha, Saturn Award for Best Writing, John Landis, and it had a nomination for Best Overall DVD on. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, the Saturn Awards is the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror. Mm -hmm. USA. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with them there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it won four there. Um, and, of course, the Oscar for Best Makeup. And that must have really peeved them to, for it to even have a nomination. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a... Who did the vote against? I don't know. Um, 1982 Oscars it was. What was in nineteen eighty one? What film was? Oh, there's the oh, um, when's best makeup? There's a actually. Do you know what? Let's um, do a second. I hope this is um. <laughs> Let's see how it came. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. So, um, even that, like, you think of the Oscars, I can't remember when I switched off, but they just come on, they do their canned laughter gag, which is usually cringeworthy, and yeah. wouldn't rank through four or five different artists. There was a whole, like, spiel about the genre. You don't get that anymore. No. No, not at all. It's like an appreciation for the art. Um, that uh, that um compare guy, God, he was doing after he gritted teeth. <laughs> yeah. He was like, oh God, horror, oh, oh. God, it's a horror film, <laughs> oh, horror, oh, yeah. Ecky, oh. and you're like, get a grip, mate. There's yeah. horror movies have made more impact the world than you could ever hope to do. In fact, I don't even know who you are, but there's Vincent Price walks down the steps and he'll be remembered forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Vincent, Vincent Price is, you know, like Peter Cushing. The two of them together are just like the Godfathers. Christopher Lee is another yeah, one. The, the old holy challenge, you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. You you won't beat them, but uh, no. Uh, that's... It, it was nice that I mean it made Rick Baker 
uh, household name, really, didn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. For horror makeup. Um, and look, did you hear any nastiness or political speeches or, you know, just gratitude and he thanked his team? Yeah. And he even gave homage to another makeup artist, you know, a potential yeah. rival. You wouldn't see that today. Just no. The, that's what I'm saying. That was, the 80s was an era of, despite real life trouble and struggle, I mean, actual, uh, like the world was not a good place. No. Yeah. Um, but there's a good naturedness of let's just pull our bootstraps up, let's try and get along as much as possible, and let's, um, mm. Appreciate good works. I miss that. Yeah. yeah. Um, as if you think, like I said, it made him a household name, but the, the people in the audience were thinking, hey, you know, this is the first time this has been, uh, you know, awarded. So th did that mean we've got to honour these guys because realise we can't make films without these guys doing makeup? I mean, he, do he doesn't only do makeup for horror films. Um, you know, he, no, because they brought a, they brought a whole bunch. It's um, if you want something, believable, would you count Planet of the Apes as a horror movie? Because there's a lot yeah. of horror aspects. You know what I mean? Um, I think the, the original, movie. You know, the original when um, they landed on Charlton Eston. Yeah, and um, that creeped me out. Is uh, like there was the brutality. That, that, was, that was quite quite scary. In in back in 1968, was it that it was made? Yeah. Um, um, you know, the thought of someone going on to, um, you know, crash landing on a planet where things had turned around. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, apes were now horrible to humans as opposed to humans being horrible to apes. Um, and then they um, brain, cut his brain out to brainwash him, didn't they? And, and um, he had that scar on his head. I, is it a horror film? It's, it's or is it just um I think it's bordering on horror. Yeah, it's, it's right there. It's it's a sci-fi yeah. movie, but it's right on the cusp yeah. of sci-fi horror. Like the, the sequel, um Battle or Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Definitely yeah. got a more into that, you know, when you went into the wastelands, the forbidden land, sorry, and the cultists. Mm, and yeah. then a coming full circle yeah. when um Cornelius didn't Cornelius go back in time with um that actress. They landed up in uh, back in modern back day, in modern Earth. day, didn't they? And uh, they had the baby, and that even that scene with the yeah, um, the birth of Caesar, obviously, you know, and yeah. the way that was dealt with, like that was pretty grim. Um, yeah. like I don't think it's quite full on horror, but it's like right there. Like, I would not feel cheated if somebody counted it as a horror, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I get up in arms about it, yeah, I think, uh, in the same way as. Alien was really because Alien was a sci-fi film. Yeah, but it was but, a horror sci-fi. Sci I mean, sci yeah. So um, yeah, the, the, it's the argument for it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, of course, makeup. Anyone that makes, mm. anyone that puts creativity, and that's what I said. These guys, like you don't see it now. No. And it, it shows on the movies because they're so awful. Yeah, and I think the makeup is what added to. Um, the film, you know how we said it could have gone either way. It could have yeah. been made into a farce and just been totally. If horrendous. Jack had been done like the the Wicked Witch of the West, yeah, because that was always comical makeup. Yeah, to me, I, I like. Um, I'm glad it wasn't. Uh, I know they're just showing through it, but <laughs> if I had been nominated, I'd be like, no, no. <laughs> I, know, I know you could argue that it was 1939, but then you look at Boris Karloff in uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein yeah. Um, 33, wasn't it the first one? 34? Yeah, run about then. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, so you, you, you could argue from, either way. You could but, say, um, you know, should it have been better because they could do Boris Karloff as a super monster with. Um, and you know, or the wolf you, man, you, or, you got the wicked witch who's just got a, a green face paint on, and not even done well. That the kids have these days, yeah. <laughs> in fact, the kids' bodies do better, yeah. <laughs> you say that, and um, my, my uh, granddaughter years and years ago, I um, took her to um, SeaWorld at um, Torquay, 
I think it's she worked on that. And uh, she, she wanted her face painted, but she'd only ever painted if I had mine done. <laughs> so I was Spider Man and she was a tiger. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was still funny because uh, um, my sister was saying, Aren't you going to wipe it off? I says, No. I'm going walk around Torquay like Spider-Man. And there I was, Anne and I'm with my granddaughter, walking around both with our face painted. It's, it's that made her day, though. Yeah, yeah. So what What the hell? Yeah. Oh, people are so uptight. That's <laughs> strange. Uptight about the weirdest things, too. Mm, I, I know. Don't know laughter. Fucking laugh, people. If people would laugh more, we wouldn't be in the bloody situation we're in. If people would oh. actually genuinely just take bloody joy out of life. Yeah, they, um, it doesn't have to be 100% fake all the time, but you take at least once a day, try and take joy out of something. Mm. God, you'll, and I think as horror fans, we appreciate that more. Yeah, because we'll we look at the darkness, we'll look at like the depravity, we'll look at the worst that happened. And oh, by the way, I'm interested in seeing how Mark turns out. He's um, he's actually, I'm actually rooting for him. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that wrong? Yeah, but obviously, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? No, Mark. Mark. Yeah, the character, the latest character I've come across. Mark. Is um, it Mark? Stalker. Oh, Stalker. Ah, sorry. Yeah, it is Mark. Mark. It is Mark, isn't it? Flips out. Only read the bloody uh, thing and uh, read it out and did a hundred edits, and I'm pretty sure remembers. Yeah, it's Mark. <laughs> no, I didn't know what you're talking about, Stalker. I like, um, um, there's there's a horror yeah. fan character to be that I'm actually rooting for. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, he turns pretty nasty, I think. But it, it's it's quite a twist on that, because yeah. <laughs> you you got to think, did he, didn't he? Situation. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah. Or we'll go down like the American Psycho route. Yeah, yeah. And right at the, it's got an epilogue on it, and you think, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I won't go into it, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, that's. But um, like I said, we we delve into that world, so you, I think you get more of appreciation of, yeah, when the laughs come, bloody take them. Yeah, you don't know what's coming next around the corner. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it's um, again in, in Plymouth. Uh, there were several cases of bullying and um, uh, always is in, in schools and everything. Oh, God, I grew up. I was my, my friend's child had um, um, not ADHD, um, something something like that. I can't remember what it was called. But he was bullied left, right and centre in school. Um, the fact is, now he's uh, 17. He's like six foot something, six foot four, I think he is. And you wouldn't bully him now, I tell you. <laughs> no, but, um, um, yeah, he, he had to move schools several times um, because schools didn't have an anti-bullying policy. And uh, well, most of it was just sweeping under the carpet. Like I had to move to secondary schools once because he had this. Um, it's like ADHD. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, anyway, he, he, you know where he was perceived to be different to the rest. Um, but, but even now, it's not even a. But he was more intelligent than the rest of that. He still yeah, is. Just have people have quirks. Yeah. Not everything has to be, and that's I think it was whole medication thing that everyone has to be labeled and medicated. You know, it's weird where people are allowed to be quirky. That's part of the human condition. You're allowed to be bit off. That's yeah. you know, and um, yeah. like I said, I I, uh, I grew, when I grew up, kids were feral. You know, I was the only way to yeah. scare them. weren't raised. They were dragged up. Yeah, and because I I was classed as a snob because I like to read books instead of throwing bricks at the police. Yeah, <laughs> that, that made me a snob apparently. Yeah, um, I um, yeah, I was I was probably the same. I um, I I remember one day I ran out in front of the police car and I know there's the old stories about the coppers hitting you, but the copper hit me. I, I ran out of the bush, which was around our garden. There was a hole in it. And um, playing uh, it or I didn't think it was. And I ran right out into the road, and the copper had to break. And he got out, and I went sorry. And he went whack like that. And he goes, "You would have got worse than that if I had hit you." 
So um, I says, oh, I'm going to tell my dad. He says, "That's a, come on then, let's go down and tell your dad. Went down and told your dad and he went whack as well. Right, yeah. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's how you're brought up. We used to climb trees. The number of times I fell out of a tree, um, you know, and uh, we used to have several trees in our garden, apple trees. And, um, yeah, a um, number of times I fell out of a tree, but these days, you know, they have warning signs around them going, do not climb this tree. And yeah, you're like, that's you, all part of you may, you may experience death if you climb this tree or something. Should we have a play? Um, the darkest thing we could have done as kids mm. um, was play soldiers in the streets. Mm. So we had had toy guns. We had have went up in the army, uh, yeah. up in the alleyways and stuff, in East Belfast during the 80s. Yeah. So we had have actually what we had done actually was we were copying the patrols, so we were actually doing it properly because that's what yeah. we saw the army patrols the streets, and we're yeah. oh yeah they're soldiers let's go play soldiers and we had all and the thing is well, obviously when you get older you realize we could have all been annihilated because that's what the terror you know what I mean that's what they yeah. do they get kids and then one of them will have a real one and you know what I mean um we used to put our life literally put our lives in our hands playing a game and we yeah. thought nothing of it. Yeah, oh, yeah like, soldiers. Right? We go play soldiers too. And we all got our toy guns, and of course they're flipping the. Like that doesn't matter whether it was daytime or nighttime. Like would have done it then as well. And yeah. the soldiers were like, what the hell? And those so, Mister Mister, can I see your gun? You know, and the, some would do it, and you jump in the land over stuff, and it's like, bloody yeah. hell, that was mental. Like, um, I I actually watched a film the other day about um the troubles in Northern Ireland. Um, it's called 50. What's it called? 50. Oh, uh, 50 Dead Men Walking. That's right. 50 Dead Men Walking. Um, yeah. uh, Marty uh, Mc... not McCarry. Yeah, he basically he was a, he, he grew up in West Belfast. He uh, he became an informant. Yeah, and uh, god, that was it. In fact, some of the parts of that book were around my neighborhood. Yeah, uh, Craigie Road, Craigie Road, where I grew up. Um, because all like I grew up and it was all either X Place, X U D R, mm. you know, it was all you know, uh, busy to miss, but a lot of X people sort of have been in stuff for still currently in things, you know, prison guards, you name it. Um, mm. but yeah, there was actually he was uh, informing an operations taking place around my neighborhood. I was like, yeah. all right, okay. And he, he stopped, I, like, uh, I'll never forget, actually, my first experience, we went, I was going to school trip, primary school, I went to the neighborhood to borrow a sleeping bag, so yeah. I never went out, um, went, borrowed a sleeping bag, came back, I had to stop in time and because they're just shop, like, it was full of, like, gifts and stuff, my mum and I always would stick our nose in the window, yeah. and I'd stop the time and lace. next thing, boom, fucking whole shop disintegrated, like, around the corner, like, yeah. Three minutes and we would have been gaping through that window. Yeah. You know, I mean, loads of things. Got, uh, I had a fun childhood. No. Well, no I've, that's a good book. Um, I've watched and read a, a few because I watched uh, Jimmy Jimmy McGovern wrote uh, Sunday, it was just called, mm. um, which was about, um, you know, Bloody Sunday. And then, of course, there was um, Bloody Sunday done by Paul Greengrass. Um, but I read a book called uh, Those Are Real Bullets, Aren't They? Um, and that's that's quite a, a, a hard read, mm. um, but uh, yeah, but yeah. Nicky I'll... Curtis, uh, Faith and Duty is a good one. Faith and Duty. Yeah, Nicky Curtis. Um, basically, he's telling the story. He actually ended up coming in part of the Secret Service. He knew uh, Bobby Nyrak and all them guys. Were... Yeah. Um, but he was he was coming from the perspective of he was an English Catholic. And he uh, couldn't wrap his head of going into as a Catholic in Northern Ireland being hated by other Catholics. Yeah. You know, that whole that's where the whole faith in Judy. He actually had a whole question of faith because that the way things were. And then yeah. the whole thing about Northern Ireland is despite how terrible it was, people don't want to leave. If you leave, you're the worst in the world. Like I am the black sheep. Yeah. I moved away and stuff. I, I, that just is not done. You might go away for a few months, but you always come back. You know, that whole idea of leaving, you're yeah. My my family still haven't forgiven me. <laughs> weird like i'm still like looked down upon you you moved away you know there's still that whole thing about it but um yeah people get threatened and you get threatened to 
like punishment beatings, shootings, but the only thing you could actually threaten someone was to put them out of Northern Ireland, that they never could come home. And Nicky Curtis was talking about working with this informant, um, Red Knife, they called him. Yeah. And they all had code names. And this whole thing where he near lost the whole troop trying to get him rescued because the IRA were coming to do him in because they found out. Yeah. A year later, he sees the same guy, like all the trouble they went to give him a new identity, hide, hide him, get him out of Northern Ireland, right? A year later, he's back walking down the streets of Belfast, and you're like, that just <laughs> that stuff went on all the time. Um, I think that's why I have a wee bit of a twisted, <laughs> twisted view in life and a bit more, um, I don't know, candid, <laughs> candid attitude towards things. Like things people get upset about today. It's like, mm, yeah, it's not really the end of the world. The end of the world is when you got freaking machine gun fire raking up in their uh, first time we went to the tall ships. You know the tall ship race, the world. Yeah. 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 The first time ever I came to Belfast. And of course, they decided to have a pop at the courthouse and we were walking home. Brrr, you know, oh, you got all stuff going yeah. on. You're like, whoa, only a flipping kid, too. Like, it was only maybe 10 or 11, I think. It just goes to show, though, how the media um, can um, shape how you think. Because um, when I was auditing, um, I was sent out to Belfast twice and um, once for a banger store. And then um, I'll never forget banger store because the manageress, she says, um, what are you doing tonight? I goes, well, nothing. I says, I don't know anyone. You know, I'm just back to the hotel. We're going karaoke. Come with us. <laughs> And there we were down at the karaoke, singing away, both drunk out of our heads, you know. And um, don't go breaking my heart. We did as a duet, and uh, it was hilarious. But um, um, yeah, it just goes to perceive because the first time I went there, I was actually frightened to go. I was because the you know the press sort of govern your mind, don't they? And, oh yeah, absolutely. There's, there's all, all, that's what they do. All, they wind things up. All people think about Belfast is again. As far back as 1973 for Bloody Sunday with bombs and people shooting each other and and um, yeah it's it, it, when I got there it was like ah oh, it's all right <laughs> it's um, all right until it wasn't that was the whole thing yeah. um just completely normal till things went south and then things were blown up in front of you and flipping <laughs> streets were getting cordoned off and just just like that. I um my first job when I was actually um because when I went to college I uh I was actually getting into vocational training so it was actually taking 16 you no know, the old job skills scheme yeah or skill seekers whatever what like YTP you know so yeah, I was yeah. becoming a trainer in that and that's what I was kind of doing and what it is basically you bring them in and once a week or twice a week you're bringing them in for a class well I remember sitting there going through the module and all of a sudden, somebody just bursts in and goes, they ran down the bottom of the road. Everybody, I mean, the entire class, out. Yeah. And this was 97. Yeah. Um, and I just went, okay, right. Fill out all the suspension. For, you know, because basically they lost their day's pay for not staying in class. So I just went, oh, right, I guess that's everybody going. Up. I mean, the entire class, everyone out, down to throw bricks of bottles. Yeah. And it was just, it was just like that. Like, come out of nowhere. Yeah, and they'll just go like two streets away, it'd be normal. Yeah, and, and just that... absolute hell like Beirut breaking loose in a, a small enclosed area. And then sometimes it'll spread out, and then it'll just like the next day, like nothing happened. <laughs> sometimes the, the funniest thing I had there was um, I didn't go, but uh, I was in a hotel opposite a pub called the Stormont Inn. Yep, that's I'm from East Belfast, so that's my whole stomping ground. Uh, well, um, that's gone now. It's I think the, is it? it changed into the quarry in, and then um, I think it's gone. Don't know yeah. to back. But um, I was uh, this guy just started to talk to me in the hotel, um, and uh, he wanted to know my life story, etc. And, and, and who are you? Where are you from? What are you yeah. doing here from? And then he you? says to me, uh, "Oh, so what are you doing tonight?" And uh, I says, oh, I says, I'll probably just get a drink somewhere." I says, "In the hotel bar." Well, if you want to come down the town with me, and I was there thinking, maybe not. <laughs> and so I just, I thought, oh God, no, you know. And um, I says, oh, I've got to do some reports. I says, so I'll probably just get a drink down the bar here and take one up to my room. Uh, um, there's no way I'm going to 
anywhere with a complete stranger, you know. Um, yeah, but uh, that's but the storm aren't in. I was told to give it a miss by the receptionist, um, for some mm -hmm. reason. Um, um the loyalist part, like busy as a UDA fucking stronghold, yeah. So it's like, um, just the gangs, local gangsters, basically. You know, it's yeah. um, there's this place, uh, god, this guy I work with. He flipping got me involved in this charity walking event, and we all went back to the East Belfast Pigeon Club. Talk about um, there's old joke the knee breakers, like that's the place people got took out the back. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And all of a sudden, these two pints landed in front of us. Oh, nice. like, okay. Oh yeah. Um, blah 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 says, you know, uh, you are okay here. Yeah. Look over to the shop. <laughs> Somebody just nods their head at you. As in, yeah, you'll be allowed to live. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you, we know that you're, you know, such and such, and that. And it's like, yeah. oh shit. <laughs> you no, know, I think I was the most I was nervous I've ever been, and I may not have been over the other side of the fence, and yeah, and, uh, got myself into some interesting places where it's like, yeah, if I knew what I did for a living, I'm dead. Sort of, <laughs> you know, I'm never coming back. I'm gonna disappear. What am I doing here? But I'm having fun. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I did one store and Lord Harris actually gave out the instruction that we had to check fitters' vans for anything that belonged to carpet right that they put on their vans when um, they hadn't been assigned it. And uh, I I just said to the fitter, I've got to check your van, unfortunately. And he went, Why? I goes because you know you're a contract fitter. I says, and we've been told to check your vans. Well, I'm not letting you check my van. I says, well, in that case, I says, I'm going to have to dispense with your services. And he turned around and said to me, you want to watch yourself while you're over here? And I was just thinking, oh, shit. <laughs> I says, just go. I says, just go. I says, I can't be asked, you know. But I was thinking, oh, shit, you know. Time to check under me car. <laughs> Do you know who's the worst fat? Do you know the super Oh, God, what do you call him? Fucking snooker player. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy Hendrix. What? No, 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 Jimmy White, right? Jimmy White. Yeah. He would um he brought in novels and stuff. Well, he's gone now, but um he went in the bar and sure enough, somebody would nick his hat or something, and he'd yeah. go straight to the flipping local hoods. Sure enough, <laughs> a few burly men would arrive in that bar and he'd get his hat back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, somebody said the wrong thing to him, and sure enough, a few growlers would appear. <laughs> God, yeah, but right. um Fun times. I, I, sec, second time, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Go in. Um, but, uh, yeah. So the important but, lesson from this is the smell, folks, because you don't know where you're going to end up somewhere dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be bitten by a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good spot. To... Did you know, I used to be a werewolf, but I'm all right. No! <laughs> Honestly, Steve, your jokes are like, okay, spread your legs, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Longest tangent. Oh, trust me, we could, uh, I think we could go longer. We'll, we'll behave ourselves. <laughs> um, uh, on that note, I think that's a good well, thing. So we'll let it go. Sorry. <laughs> Steve, as always, mate, absolute pleasure. Great to have you on. This is, uh, we just have to say that American Werewolf in London, give it a watch and you'll be a fan. It's such a fun movie, yeah. honestly. And it's really movie. Yeah. so much fun. Remember, fun folks, yeah. you can still have it. Yeah. But um, we're going to be back together again on Saturday. Saturday for um, talk about censorship. Um, censorship. So we'll be, we're going to go right into it. We're not, we're, we've been hinting at it throughout all our podcasts, but we're going to cover this topic. And get right into you know, like I said, this stupid attitude towards horror creators is not right. And I think with the time we start speaking up and find solutions, so um, I think about seven or eight people in the panel, so it's going to be yeah. quite a few involved. And it's, it's amazing how much that topic's actually touched the nerve of folks. So looking forward to that one. Um, third tomorrow night, I'm on Brotherhood of the Dice, and Thursday, Dale Gibson's coming back. We're going to do um, Brain Dead slash Dead Alive. Peter Jackson. Oh, Brain Dead! I love Brain Dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, so we're, we're doing that. Finally, um, I haven't seen her in ages. It's like, Ned, come on, 
Got to get That's back on. Done by the guy who done Lord of the Rings. Peter it? Jackson, yeah. Peter Jackson, yeah. Mm, That's My question was, how the hell did he get Lord of the Rings? When you see his early stuff, hello. <laughs> yeah, Even yeah, the yeah. Frighteners. <laughs> You're like, how did he get Lord of the Rings? He, he what a legend. Known the right people. <laughs> It's a mystery because even like, and he did such an amazing job. Yeah, but yeah, when you see his like uh, his first four or five movies, oh my god! Like, how did that man? Like, it's just completely <laughs> better. But no, no, yeah, no. that's gonna be Thursday. Um, obviously you can pop on the live chat, say say hello. Um, like I said, always good to have Dale back. I haven't seen her in absolute ages. Uh, mm. she's always a great laugh. But there you go, folks. Plan to get on. Um, I've also Go organized for having our guests coming on soon. Buy my books <laughs> www.stevensamuelknight.co.uk. Yep, I'll and Stephen with the H. And, and uh, we'll be featuring very shortly the next couple of weeks. You'll be getting stalker. a wee stalker, stalker. Uh, actually, looking really good. Like, I've just read the first chapter and I'm like, I'm looking forward to it, honestly. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, thanks very Thank much, you. everyone. Take place in the live chat. Thanks for tuning in and do the typey clicky things. Come up with the other channel. Blah blah blah. Until next time, keep it creepy, keep it horrific. <laughs>